This video is going to be something of a hot take, but I think it's going to be pretty fun to talk about anyway. When people think about programming and software engineering, it being a creative endeavor is not immediately what comes to mind, but I kind of want to argue the opposite in this video. And to be honest, you could take what I'm going to say about software engineering and apply it to pretty much all other STEM fields if you just extrapolate the points out a little bit. But because this channel is obviously about computer engineering, I'm going to keep this in the software realm for today. Now, what we're actually going to be doing is going through four different applications of software engineering from the most creative, in my opinion, to the least creative. Now, um, so obviously, you know, depending on how you practice software engineering, the levels of creativity required are going to change. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, I do want to make the distinction between programming and software engineering or, or coding and software engineering. A lot of people, they like to politicize this, this difference and say like, ha, I'm a software engineer. That means I'm better than you because you're a coder or whatever. I'm just going to look at them sort of objectively and make my point very, like my opinion, very, very clear. Now, if you are given, if you are given like the language, the framework, the, um, you know, the, the libraries you're allowed to use, the inputs, the outputs, the test cases, the things like that. And basically all you have to do is like write it to a spec, you're coding. You're not really doing much engineering. Engineering is more about making the right trade-offs based on the problem that you're actually trying to solve and choosing the right stuff for the job. Again, if you're like choosing those things because it's like the only thing that you know how to do, like if you just go and use like Python for everything or like use a particular web stack for every application, that doesn't really cut the mustard for me. You're still not really doing engineering. You're just, you're not, cause you're not really making decisions based on you know trade-offs and things like that and trying to choose the right thing for the job essentially so i just want to make my opinion on like software engineering versus coding very very clear like if you're just writing stuff to a spec and everything's been given to you you're just doing the implementation that doesn't really count for me and in my opinion there's not very much creativity in that so starting with the first one um the first one is like personal projects now this is what I think is probably the most creative part. And my last video was actually on personal projects, which is why I want to bring this up first. Uh, so essentially when it comes to personal projects, like you have to come up with an idea, right? You have to design the features that you want, like conceptualize all the features that you want. You have to choose the language, the frameworks, the libraries, like you pretty much have to design everything from scratch. Now, you can decrease the level of creativity required for this by essentially like going to one of those like top five beginner or like top five resume projects or whatever and like getting the idea and feature list off of that. But a lot of the time you'll still be writing up the implementation. You'll still have to decide how to do the implementation. Like you're still making a lot of those creative decisions about, you know, the actual design of the thing. Now, again, like, if that top five list has an implementation linked like in a GitHub or something, you are decreasing the level of creativity required to do that. So that's kind of my point. You can take most of these things in software engineering and decrease the level of creativity, but a lot of the times you might decrease the level of quality of the thing that you produce or, you know, it, it's, it's a lot less flexible than if you had actually taken the time to make the design decisions yourself. Um, now, the next thing I want to talk about is consulting or freelance work, because this is going to be the next thing sort of on the list, down the list of creativity. Because when it comes to consulting and freelance work, a lot of the time you're given the feature, right? Or, or like you're given the idea and you're given the list of features and you're given a rough idea of what the client wants, essentially. But the actual design of how the system fits together, the the implementation, like the, all the, the language choices, you know, your architecture stuff, like... For example, if you're on a web, like you can use a monolith or microservices or something like that. If you're on embedded, you know what microcontroller are you going to use? Are you going to use SPI or USART to communicate? Like all of these decisions, polling or interrupts, all these decisions that come to mind when you're like actually designing a product, you know, are, are things that require creativity. So that's why I think when people say, oh, software engineering, it's all logical, you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I think they're actually missing a lot of the actual design work that goes into creating a product like that. So consulting and, and again, 
the level of creativity required for this sort of stuff decreases depending on the client you get. Some clients would give you a very detailed specification and, and they might say, you know, we've got all this stuff that it's doing and we want it done like this. And so that decreases your creativity a little bit. And they might already have an existing code base or something that they want to get you in on. You might not be designing a product from scratch, right? So these sort of, uh, these sort of things can decrease the level of creativity, although I think it's still pretty up there when it comes to you know, like relatively speaking compared to the other ones. Now, the next thing is industry work. So with industry work, I typically put this below consulting and uh, I'm gonna speak mainly about junior and mid-level engineering stuff because that's pretty much what I'm qualified to talk about. But essentially from the industry work that I've been doing, um, essentially your tech lead pretty much decides all of the design decisions up front. And they'll do like, you know, we're going to use this language, we're going to use this stack, we're going to use these frameworks, things like that. Um, and a lot of the time, just like with some consulting jobs, you'll be coming into an existing project, an existing code base, where all of those decisions have kind of been made for you. But I would put this higher than the last category we're going to talk, out, talk about, because if you are hired, even as like a junior or mid-level software engineer, you are hired for creativity, essentially because what they're looking for is not somebody who can uh, just go ahead and design everything to a specification or like not design, but implement everything to a specification uh, because then they just hire like a coder or, or something like that. But if you're actually hired to do some of this work, it's sort of breaking new grounds. It's not really been done before. At least the implementation hasn't really been done before. And you still have to come up with new ideas and ways that you might write that implementation. It's not the cookie cutter CRUD application that you could spit out in an afternoon. Like they're paying you to solve problems within the context of we've got this existing code base, we're using this ex existing stack, etc., etc. You're still being hired to creatively solve problems if you kind of understand what I'm, what I'm saying here. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to creativity in software engineering is university projects. How useful are they? Um, and I would say pretty much not at all, to be completely honest with you. And I, I've got some comments about this as well. Like some comments on some videos have been like, uh, oh, you know, like, do you find the university stuff helpful? Do you think you could teach it all yourself? I don't actually find university assignments very helpful because it's coding, it's not engineering. They'll give you, and, and this is the nature of the thing, um, with the nature of assignments and the way that they're marked, at least at my university, you can't really let students be very creative about it because you want to essentially, um, you know, assembly line mark all this stuff. And it's all got to be uh, like they, they give you the language, they give you the target platform, they give you the libraries you're allowed to use and not allowed to use. Um, you know, they give you the inputs, the outputs, they give you test cases to make sure that your output exactly matches what they're wanting. There's no engineering in it at all. It's a coding assignment. You're just writing an implementation. I have yet to see um, an actual, like an actual proper coding like or software engineering assignment from my university that wasn't project-based. So essentially you get into a team and you come up with an idea, you pitch the idea, or you know, you're given sort of the idea and the team has to come up with a project that solves that. That's sort of the creative stuff that I've done at university that I've found actually helpful. But the coding assignments where they're like, oh, we're going to teach you about TCP and networking. So go write a socket server that does exactly this in C targeting Linux with this implementing this protocol that we've come up and we're going to give you. That stuff is not actually that helpful. You can do that all yourself. Like you could watch a video or um, tutorial about socket programming or something like that and get the exact same thing. You're not actually designing anything. You're not solving any unique problems. You're literally just coding. You're just writing up the implementation. So university assignments, I have found them to not really, unless they're project-based, be very creative at all. Um, and that's why I think they're last on the list. But essentially the point of this video is that I believe software engineering is a creative field because depending on what kind of project you're working on, you could either make the entirety of the process from start to finish your own and come up with everything yourself. You know, the idea, the features, the language, the libraries, the platforms, how everything fits together, the architecture. Or you could come up with none of it at all, you know, in the case of a university assignment where you're just coding and writing out the, the application essentially. 
Um, which is why, and, and look, we'll, we'll get a bit personal for a second. I was a very creative kid. But that being said, I was never good at any of the stereotypically creative things, right? Like, I was never that good at art. I was kind of okay at, at music, but only songs that I had practiced for ages. I couldn't come up with anything myself, you know? Um, I was not good at the traditional creative fields. But I feel that software engineering for me is a, is a mechanism for me to express my creativity and, you know, bring my ideas to life in a way that I'm actually good at, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's a medium that I'm actually good at. So for me, it's kind of a big deal that software engineering is, is, can be, well, can be a creative field because I like to think of myself as a creative person, but most of the typical creative stuff I'm not actually that good at. <laughs> So that's kind of one of my more subjective reasons for why I think software engineering is a is a creative field. And I've certainly done a whole lot of personal projects and, and fun things that sort of express my creativity and the things that I like to do. So that's really it for this video. I just want to kind of outline that. Let me know what you guys think uh, about this. Do you find the same? What kind of aspects of software engineering do you find more creative or less creative? I'm really keen to hear about it. Cheers.